back with the flight. Enjoying his time under Dennis Pagey. He's got Walker through the middle, still on his own. But he goes for Favola and Whitnell, who have been pretty good targets in the first few weeks of the Wizard Cup. And who knows what Brendan will do here. He knows. He'll kick a goal. And so he did. He's got five in all. Lappin has four and two for Scotland. And the Blues in control. They'll host the grand final next week against the West Coast Eagles. And you can see the score as uh, Rodney Eade. I'm not sure what he'll do for this last quarter, Walsey, but uh, maybe reshape the team. Oh, he's already done that about three times, uh, Hutto, and I don't think he can do much more. All right, let's get down for a Carlton perspective. With Christy is Anthony Kudafidis. Thanks, Anthony. Well, Anthony, another <laughs> Anthony. You'd be pretty happy with what you've seen in the, the first three quarters. I mean, is it better than what you expected or is it pretty much gone to plan? Oh, look, it's better than what we expected. We, we uh, got off to a great start in the first quarter and uh, the boys have kept going. And uh, look, they've played really tough and hard footy and direct footy. And uh, we've kicked a lot of goals because of it. Well, you do, if you go on to win this game, you'll host the Wizard Cup Grand Final. I mean, what would that mean for the club? Oh, look, that's huge for the club after where we've been the last couple of years, the last two, three years. I mean, to play a uh, pre-season Grand Final for the Wizard Cup would be great for the guys. And when you've got a young team like we have, it'd be a great experience for them. Will you be there? Well, let's uh, talk about your knee for, for a second. It's, um, when it's flared up again, you've had injury after injury, and how is it this time? Yeah, look, fingers crossed. I uh, ran this morning and I pulled up pretty good from it. So uh, hopefully if I do everything right this week, I'll be playing next week. Well, good luck for that. Thanks very much. But more on the injury front with the Western Bulldogs. We saw Lindsay Gilby taken off the ground on a stretcher. I'm told that he hasn't gone to hospital yet. He is still in the Bulldogs. And they need to go in this last quarter, that's for sure. And they haven't been going anywhere particularly. Last quarter underway from the Telstra Dome. He had no chance to grab him straight away. That's pinned right inside. There's David Teague and just shows how they rely on him. Look at the size. Bandy is so much taller, but Teague is very good in the air. It just means that Carlton can afford to play a mobile halfback flanker as a key position player if needed. Jens Siracusa to West. Delayed the kick and now got good depths. Whole host of big men down there. One of them was being held on to. I think it was Darcy. So Grant, Bandy and Darcy all lining up deep in the square, Walsey. Yes, and do they need to get a goal out of a big player? Look at the Teague mark. Yeah, and courage. To no avail, but yeah. typical effort. They haven't got a goal out of one of their taller players tonight, the Dogs. Chance here for Luke Darcy. Hasn't kicked a goal so far in the Wizard Cup, but now he has. That's the eighth goal of the night for the Dogs. Margin 10 goals. This is how they began the third quarter with a goal in the first minute. In the end, they were outscored six goals to two. David Teague fearless. You see Teague coming back into picture. Carlton by 60. As the Bulldogs start well in this final term. Minson winning clearly. Walker a hand on it. And covers it well. Shown some glimpses in the second half. Got Rawlings into Whitmore's back. You got him high tackle. Stevens wanting to run high tackle. Left arm was where Rawlings said it was. But the right might have been the one that... Concerned umpire Simon Meredith. Not a lot in it. Whitnell's but, ball. But the umpires are hot on it this season. Six marks tonight for Whitnell. DeLuca got the hands on there. Hahn. And a ball up. The only outcome. When these two teams last met in round nine last year, neither was travelling terribly well. It was at Optus Oval. The Bulldogs won by four goals. Carlton have come a long way since then. Minson getting a boot to ball, goes nowhere. Favola, Lappin, who got the show on the road for Carlton tonight. 
And he helps it to Simpson, who can line up for his second goal. Just here, Cameron. The unselfish football of Carlton's been a highlight tonight. Whitnell, Lappin, who we just saw there. Lappin could have had a shot for goal. Pulled the kick and gave the younger, inexperienced teammate a chance to take a mark and have a shot at goal. Because if you can put it through, it means a lot to him. To extend it again to 11 goals. Kick one from further out than this in the previous quarter, and he threads this perfectly. The Blues 19th. He's a young kid with the pace to burn, uh, Wolsey. He's had trouble putting weight on more than anything in the first couple of years, but yes. uh, looks OK. He does look lively, and you can just see there, and now he's playing on Cameron Faulkner, who's pretty quick, but he was able to just accelerate that four or five steps to get out and take advantage of the lap and kick. And you can see him go to his older teammate and say, thanks, mate, appreciate that. So a couple of goals for Cade Simpson. Joining in on the act for the Blues now. 66 points the margin. Winston might, the ball, Winston the might win a free. A nice little ball, Andrew. Marks here, please. Didn't even get to Luca's name right. <laughs> Put him, Andrew. <laughs> Vincent, again to those tall Bulldogs in the square. Grant, just his old timing seemed to have escaped him at the, at the moment. And they were tackling in numbers, one of them was illegal. No advantage, so it'll come no back. No advantage, bring it back. Bring it back, Scotty, no advantage. See, I think it's the Lappin, I think Bloody it was, Adam. wasn't it, who clearly seized the opportunity oh. to try and play on there. If the umpire calls play Maybe. on, and it comes unstuck. Well, let him pay. Yeah, let him swing. Run. Agree. Livingston goes to the wing. Prendergast. Favola's coming again. Had to prop that time and Coops over the top. Oh, Johnson, that was great work at ground level. West. Good tackling again by Carlton in their forward 50. Lappin with 22 possessions, leading the way on the ground. Scotland, 19, and Favola, 18. All more than the highest Bulldog, Cooney, who has 16 disposals so far. As Johnson gets it somehow out of the pack and almost kicks a goal. Almost. It was just a behind. Let's get an update on Lindsay Gilby then from Christie. Yeah, Lindsay Gilby has just been taken to hospital just for some precautionary x-rays on his neck and back. They don't think that there is anything there, but just for precaution, they need to have the x-rays done. Uh, he is concussed, but the good news is that he is up and talking and he knows where he is. So they seem to be quite fairly happy if they can be with it. Rainmaker from Bowden out to the wing. Big climb from Walker, bringing back memories of uh, that huge launch in his debut on that wet day at Carlton last year against the Eagles. It'll be Carlton and the Eagles next week in the final of this year's Wizard Cup. Remember last year it was St Kilda and Geelong. They both finished top four at the end of the season. Coops for the Bullocks. Good to see a number 51. Good old-fashioned high number. This is Griffin. Star draft pick for the Bulldogs this year and Cooney from last works it on to Cross. Again, Carlton with the numbers at halfback. Lappin might have marked that. Hahn there to take his double fister, but kicks nowhere. And Thornton, who had it out here on the wing a moment ago, has worked his way back. Good, honest footballer. Been a real win, hasn't it, for Dennis Pagan tonight? And the tactical stakes, at least his players have been able to execute the plan a lot better than the Bulldogs players have. Stevens delivering this time for Favola. High one from Prendergast to the square. De Luca crashing the pack. He wanted it down to Davies, and that's a terrific smother. Oh, Bowden cops another. In fact, he may have got some friendly fire. It was a Blues player that uh, Davies that went down. De Luca still scrapping hard. Hurry kick across the body from Johnson. A fist from Bowden. Ray missed it. And finally, they should get out of trouble here. West again farming the ball out. Jim Syracuse, a positive movement into the middle. McMahon. And it opens up for a leading forward. Coming out to meet it is Mitch Hahn. Again, Carlton with numbers back. No point blasting it long, Mitch. And he realised that and goes out wide. 
for Grant, who's come up the ground. He needs some protection here. He instead, spears the ball in for Bandy, who, if anything, played for a free kick, doesn't yeah. get it, and it's out of bounds. And you can't, you can't, big man, six foot six, you don't go playing for free kicks. Doesn't send a good message to the rest of the team. Look at that, total disposals. Two in front, the Western Bulldogs over Carlton. We heard Anthony Kudapidis interviewed at three-quarter time. One of the words he said was direct, and that's the way that Carlton play. Dennis Pagan's trademark, isn't it? Yeah, seems always here. highly efficient. Lampen to Stevens. Away he goes. Will he be playing next week in the final? Must oh. have been tempted to load up for nine, but he did just the right thing with Favola on the lead. How direct was that? Question for you, Tim. You mentioned the uh, Coops high number, number 51. Why do you think he might be wearing 51 for the Bulldogs? He's one short of a full pack of cards. No. <laughs> I think it might be respect for a former Bulldog who wore that number. 51. You've got me guessing, Rob. Michael, Michael McLean. McLean. Michael McLean. The bowler for number six to go past Tony Lockett on the all-time goal-kicking list in the night and pre-season competitions. He's knocked off Dermot Brereton tonight. This for Big Plugger. And he's got his number. Blues go further ahead. And here they are, just bolting through the middle of Telstra Dome. Catch me if you can. Favola's going backwards. Now he comes forward. We can't see that, but that's what he's done. And Favola's opponent, Brian Harris, you've got to feel for him. Lance Whitnell just uh, having a rest, got a rousing reception from the Carlton faithful as he came off the ground. Carlton out to a 73-point lead in front of 26,000 people tonight at the Telstra Dome. Gian Syracuse emerging, getting it deep. Grant, the most likely, went to ground. Darcy couldn't get to the front. Blues being careful not to concede the three. Darcy going back. Play on was the call, not 15. Hahn might have kicked a goal out of that. You'd almost say it was a fluke. It was a wobbly one, but it was a goal. And I think Rodney Yeed will show a tape to his players through the week of big forwards who give up on the marking contest, who are looking for a free kick. And that is a bad habit that I'm sure he will get out of their game by season's end. Anyone in particular? Well, Chris Grant we saw just there. Bandy earlier on. The dogs pull one back. But uh, they're still behind by more than 11 of them. DeLuca, Prendergast, Johnson, Caporiali. Walker getting better as this game wears on. Morell from the side. Bulldogs have the scouts. Bowden sweeps it away for Ray. And now young Tom Williams. Well done, Tom. That's fine. From an extraordinary background. Well Just 12 months or so of playing footy. He only fine. played about 20 games before he lined up with the Bulldogs this year. West working it forward to McMahon. Oh, their confidence has left them, and he's gone. Good Not tackling again by the Blues. Ignominy upon ignominy oh. for the Bulldogs. Being dismembered by Carl. Camper Reale, a beautiful kick to Walker. Simpson lurking inside. Walker, though, slices it into the 50. Big Minson waiting down. Jen Syracuse. And now it's cross. And he's got West on the wing. And down to power. Who might be within range. He just went for the extra step. And Lappin was the spoiler. That was a clumsy effort from Stevens over the top of West, who shakes his head in disgust. If you're coaching the Blues, would you uh, expect Nick Stevens to be playing Thanks, next mate. week, Rob, uh, with his best mate getting married? 
he's got the best mate or, he, or his brother. Or his brother, brother. is it? Yeah. I think it's his brother getting married. They probably they probably didn't presume they'd, they'd be in the grand final. I think you're going to let him be best man at his brother's oh, wedding. Wolsey, you have softened in your age. <laughs> no doubt about that. Not that you're old. Here's the quick kick in towards full forward and out of bounds. In fact, to quote you, after an umpire's decision that you disagreed with last year, soft, soft, soft. I'm sorry I've let you there. Coming <laughs> in 10 metres. Thanks, Ian. Luke. Again, Porsche, the Ford 50 Don't swarming with up. blue jumpers and some red ones as Cooney, an inventive handball. Camparelli, that'll be a ball up. And contested possession. This is what coaches like to see. And no surprise, the top five all Carlton players in this game tonight. 102 to 79 overall. Oh, they've worked so much. Hey, look at that again. They're 70 points in front and they're gang tackling like that. In the last five minutes, we've seen Lappin put a tackle on. Lappin do a uh, smother off the boot. And Camperiali dragging a big man like Chris Grant to ground. They are switched on. Darcy and DeLuca. That was Livingston, I presume, in there. Griffin, Carazzo showing a clean pair of heels and gets it across, working it nicely. Teague on the end of it. This is Scotland. Players for Fafola again. He's got four Bulldogs to beat. And he might just do it, no. Even that was too much. Harris goes back and goes to Williams. Crowd of just over 26,000 here tonight. 26,039. Heavy collision was looming there. DeLuca arriving. He's put on the brakes. To his credit, it's banned his ball. Final here next week, Carlton and West Coast. So uh, just the one Victorian team. But you'd think the Blue Army would be out in force. As the boys from Optus Oval are re-emerging. Rawlings. Jim Syracuse. High ball, Darcy to the drop of it to line them up. Rodney is persistent with Darcy playing from the goal square for the entire second half. And he's the only tall player to have kicked a goal for the Bulldogs. Should make it two. Here's the tackles for the match, Rob. You can see Carlton just three ahead, but it's really been in this last quarter that uh, Carlton have just continued with their persistence. Nine to four for the quarter. Just the intensity of the tackling, Hutto, is uh, something that you really can't put a, a figure on, but Carlton's intensity has been far greater than the dogs. Pretty good kick for a big man as Luke Darcy. He nails that. Nothing to be gained, Chris. Nothing to be gained. Certainly not at this stage. Done and dusted as a contest. Carlton clear winners. And with Darcy playing at full forward, it gives uh, Minson an opportunity to have a real crack in the ruck, which he's done in this second half. After the announcement during the week, Wolsey from Optus Oval of an $11.1 million loss. It's nice to not have a big deficit tonight, isn't it? Yes, Ian Collins will be very pleased with this result. This is Ray through the middle. McMahon making the errors there under no pressure. This is Rawlings. West leading for the ball. He goes even shorter to Grant. He gets some hoots. High kick up towards full forward. This is Cooney. Out to power. Can he slot one for the dogs? He can. Sam Power, along with Patrick Bowden, there are a couple of Bulldogs that really have to lift their output. They've been in the system now for three or four years. 
And it's time they started to deliver. Second goal to power. Notable there on the replay that Minson really arrived and crashed that pack from behind and kept it alive for the Bulldogs. He offers them some hope. Big frame. There he is, number 27 at the centre contest. Coming in off a short sideways run against French and doing well to Cooney, to Griffin. Good takeaway by the Dogs. Again, they're forced wide. Stevens been good. McGrath. Eagleton from behind. Able to get the fist on the ball. Eagleton. Took one on the cranium earlier in the evening. Yes, he's got a bit of Vaseline on the top of his head. He got that very early in the game. And I think Matty Lappin has certainly earned his money tonight. Minston and French at it again. French, well played. Holding him at bay with one Stop hand. Getting the other arm of the ball. Minson falling on a Carlton player and winning the free kick. Good luck being under there. Thanks, Scotty. There's no sympathy for the player over the ball these days. Coops winds up. Has a decent crack at it and nails a niner. Some rare joy for the Bulldogs fans tonight as Stephen Coots launches a big super goal at the Telstra Dome. And does the number 51 proud. And Michael McLean would be up there in Darwin watching this Hanno saying, that's my boy. And wasn't he a wonderful footballer for the Bulldogs and in particular Brisbane when he went up there and... Uh, what number did he wear up there, was it? Gee, I should know. What number was he? I don't know. I, can't I coached him for five years. I can't remember. I just remember how good he was. Carazzo for the Blues. Marching back to 46 points. So uh, the Dogs just gaining a little bit of respect on the ball. This is Simpson. De Luca should have held that. Might kick a goal yet. Cross. Helped by a good shepherd from Harris. Eagleton, McMahon, and he has a man loose on the wing, it's Coops, who can set something up here, oh, still can't get it right, Coops has to go in and try and atone, Ray over the footy, Big Minson, Carl Prevail, Walker, Johnson, Simpson once more, here's the Feb from on the paint, big swinging ball, not quite the carry. Rawlings for the dogs. Goes to Bowden. Brick wall. And that was well done by Walker to hem it in. Faulkner out wide. Faulkner's been given an uh, opportunity to play in the back line tonight, and that'll be good for him. Only played the half a dozen senior games for the Bulldogs. Griffin. Grant came hard, and that allowed the ball to go through to that man again. Number 51. I think Mick McLean was 19, but I'm not sure. Just remember how they run and how they move when you coach. I, don't I, reckon, you're numbers. Right. I reckon it was 19. Eagleton out wide to McMahon. From inside the 50. It won't matter anyway because it hasn't carried the distance. That's a little sloppy. Camparelli able to clean up, though, as the Blues have been able to do all night. Morell could have gone short to Carazzo instead of cross the goals. Backwards, so it was play on. Snooker, it's got Camparelli. Makes it tough for Livingston. Grant trying to work his way to the front. Davies has di dived on it. West trying to go backwards so they can go forwards. Chris Grant would love a goal, but that one hasn't come back enough. for next week, Tim. Should be a terrific final. And uh, I might reserve judgment for the time being, Gosh. Rob. Sitting on the fence, Tim. One thing I will say is the Eagles travel well and play well here. And you would think on how they enter the 2005 season, they probably are entitled to slight favouritism. So I will commit myself to that extent. Chambers, speaking of Eagles, has settled in very well at Optus Oval. And he drops the ball 
out of the midriff of Nick Stevens. Good to see he's trying to keep the lid on it already down there. Yeah, but what about the kick of Chambers? Yeah, Dennis Pagan, kick it into the centre ch channel. Don't go wide to the boundary line. They are playing predictable football to each other. They know what a teammate will do when he gets it. We see Chambers there, squares it up. And that's why they kick to an open goal face and kick straight. It might be Nick Stevens' last contribution to Carlton's Wizard Cup campaign in this pre-season. A glum night for Rodney Ede. You, you look through the list, Rob, and I, we don't want to get carried away with a, an appearance in a, in a pre-season grand final, but Morrell, Johnson, French, Teague, McGrath, Chambers, Stevens, obviously a prize recruit, Scotland, Bannister, pretty much all those players close to being uh, not wanted at their clubs Hagen went after them and he's turned them into a very good combination absolutely and they will be red hot to do well well they have been throughout the Wizard Cup but uh, they've earned the chance to play in a grand final and let's not forget Geelong and St Kilda played in the Wizard Cup grand final last year and they went on to have terrific seasons this is Scotty West now looking for Eagleton but missing the target Minson to power. It's a bit of a mess down there. This might be a chance, though. Darcy not on the second bite. And Livingston would have uh, brought some smiles to the faces of Carlton fans in the last couple of weeks. They've been very patient with Livingston over a, a long period. And Livingston is starting to uh, show something. He, he's been given that full-back position. Ideally, I think the Blues want Thornton to be played out at centre-half back because uh, he's a very creative player. Brought us almost as many smiles to Carlton faces as you did, Hutto, when you uh, presumed Livingston had the ball in the middle of the pack a while ago. The Blues are into the final. Carlton are re-emerging. They have crunched the Western Bulldogs by 10 goals to win by 51 points. And they'll play West Coast next week. Quick word, Rob. Oh, just a, a four-quarter display. That's something that'll make the coach very happy. They had the game won by half-time, but they soldiered on and powered on, and the tackling in that last quarter was just superb. So it's the Blues 21-7 to 11-7, led by Brendan Favola with six goals, and Matthew Lappin, who kicked four. An emphatic victory by the Blues, who'll meet the Eagles next week. Hope you enjoyed the coverage from the Telstra Day.